Next guest was a key witness in Donald Trump's first impeachment trial, testifying about uh, Trump's pressure uh, campaign to get Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden. Retired uh, U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman joins me now. He's the author of the book here, Right Matters, an American Story. Great book, uh, very successful book. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, thanks so much for being with us. Um, the very thing that you said during uh, Trump's first impeachment, uh, he did again after his 2020 loss. Uh, instead of pressuring Ukraine, he was pressuring the Department of Justice. Uh, he was pressuring election officials in places like Georgia. Both times he faced no real uh, legal or political uh, consequences. And as we were just talking about with Ellie a few moments ago, there's all this hesitancy and, and I, trepidation, I suppose, to haul him in front of the January 6th committee. It seems like this works out for him every time. At some point, Colonel Newman, doesn't somebody just have to stand up to him? You, you know all about that. Well, I, absolutely. And I think um, individual actors have and uh, maybe have uh, suffered some of the consequences, but they've uh, served the, the U.S., uh, the, the general public good. I think what ends up happening is if Trump and his cronies are not held accountable, this becomes a rehearsal for a future insurrection. We need accountability to deal with the, the crimes, the criminal activity from the previous administration, to be able to expose the big lie of stolen elections, to expose the president's wrongdoing, to expose the corruption of his uh, proxies. And if we do that, we could start chipping away at the big lie. We could start bringing this country back together. Bring, bring, uh, and with that, move ahead. Without accountability, we can't do that. Yeah. And I think people at home see how Trump's allies are trying to stonewall these proceedings. They see Steve Bannon doing it right now. Uh, they wonder, what is the point of this process if it's so easy to get around it? I mean, what, what's the point of uh, issuing subpoenas? Why do these congressional subpoenas exist if you can just toss them by the wayside and ignore them? Um, do you think our institutions are built to withstand these types of tactics? I don't think so. And I think in, in part what we've experienced the past four years, and maybe even longer, is that the legislative branch has uh, ceded some of its, uh, of its authority. It ceded its role as a check on executive power. And I think that this is an opportunity for the legislative branch to assert its role in the cost constitutional process, hold the former president and other officials accountable, that is both through the subpoenas and through an exposure of what happened, bring the facts to, uh, out into the light, about January 6th. The other thing is, in reality, this is also a political uh, endeavor. And it exposes that this, this president, this former president, President Trump, was a corrupt actor that continues to try to steal the election that he lost, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Now, the next, uh, now it's also in the hands of the American public. We have an election in less than a few weeks. And what I think we need to do is we need to take a look at those people that the president supports, those Trump acolytes, those other actors that have proven themselves to be f compromised. Actually, they've marked themselves with the, the scarlet letter of uh, President Trump's approval, and we need to make sure that those folks do not make it into, the next, the, in, into office. And that's why one of the reasons I've supported Terry McAuliffe against Glenn Youngkin. Glenn Youngkin is a, is a Trump acolyte. He supports the, president's, the former president's policies with regards to denying the, the severity of COVID, denying January 6th insurrection, denying uh, a stolen, uh, this, this, or propagating this idea of a stolen election, and we can't have that. He's actually, in, this, in the state of Virginia, he's a non-viable candidate. It's just a matter of the pop, uh, population showing up and making their voices heard. I do want to ask you a little bit about that in just a moment, but just to button this up on January 6th, if you were advising the January 6th committee, would you advise the committee to issue a subpoena for Donald Trump to testify, cooperate with that investigation? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And now I get to, I have the privilege of doing that because I'm not an attorney, don't have to understand all the difficulties there. But on the same note, uh, the president should be brought to, uh, to, to justice. He's not above the law. I felt that was the, ca the case when I reported, uh, reported a presidential wrongdoing and presidential abuse of power. And if he lies in front of the commission, then he, he should f uh, suffer the consequences. The problem is that he has not suffered the consequences. He did not suffer the consequences of an abuse of power in the first impeachment that led him to believe that he could act with impunity, mismanage COVID, uh, attempt to steal an election into the future. And also in the second, and after the insurrection, he was not held accountable. What, what discourages him from continuing to behave as a future authoritarian leader attempting to 
entice Republican state uh, governments from introducing legislation that allows them to overturn the will of the people that vote in one direction, we need accountability. It's an open wound. Without accountability, you can't move forward. And uh, I know you're a Terry McAuliffe supporter, so let me ask you about this uh, Virginia race, which is becoming a, a national race. There's just no question about it. Um, I want to go uh, to an event that happened uh, last week. Uh, you probably uh, noticed this. Uh, it was a rally for uh, Glenn Youngkin, uh, the Republican candidate who's challenging Terry McAuliffe. And at that event, uh, they uh, pledged allegiance to an American flag that they claimed uh, was uh, used or carried during the January 6th insurrection. What was your response when you saw that? He's disqualified. He's an extremist. He has no place leading this, uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia. In fact, he's probably not, the, he's certainly not the best suited to lead this, the Commonwealth of Virginia. We have a former governor that's running for another term. He's ready to govern on day one. He's ready to advance the interests of, of the, uh, the, the, Commonwealth, the population of the Commonwealth of Virginia. He's ready to make sure that we continue to move in the right direction with regards to law enforcement. Uh, like he did under his first tenure with regards to economic prosperity. The only people that uh, uh, Youngkin has served so far are himself. He Why do you think the race is so close right now? Why does Terry McAuliffe need uh, Barack Obama, uh, Joe Biden, uh, Mrs. Biden? Why does, he, why does he need all of these high-flying surrogates, folks like yourself, uh, out there campaigning on his behalf if, if it's such an open and shut case as you're saying? I think what he's... he's uh, He's preying on fears, and we know that fears are a much, much bigger motivator than the hopes and, and, uh, and beliefs in prosperity. His, belief, his uh, slogans about you know, a critical race theory, which is, there is no substance to it. There is, critical race theory is not being taught in school. It's about mask mandates and that uh, undermining the, this, the validity of the impact of COVID on, on the Commonwealth of Virginia. On law enforcement, where he, again, he has no executive uh, uh, experience and, and is not prepared to govern the way Terry McAuliffe is, but he's still preying on these are the typical slogans that we heard out of President Trump, out of other uh, acolytes, and that's what he's preying on. And, and do you think that if Yunkin wins this race, that this starts to pave the way, uh, starts to clear the path for Donald Trump to run for another term in office? What worries you about that? Absolutely. I think this is a bellwether. I think just the way we considered the recall uh, in California a bellwether, if, if uh, Larry Elder had won that one, um, then we, we would be talking about a, probably a different set of circumstances, a different environment. But this is another critical moment. If Yunkin, if a Trump acolyte wins in Virginia, a purple state that's moving, uh, moving in the direction of progressive, moving in the direction of frankly, progress, not progressive, just in terms of progress, being more inclusive, more representative, and there's a reversal there, I think that sets a template. I think we've, we need to defeat um, Glenn Youngkin because he is a Trump supporter. He represents Trump's policies. He's not prepared to govern. Terry McAuliffe is. That's who I encourage people to vote for. All right. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, uh, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and please do that again sometime. Soon. Thank you. Thanks.